Hello. Now let's try to understand a concept called as HTML helper in MVC. So in the previous demo that we made, we have got views and under HTAS folder, we create three views, one for display, one for create and one for edit. So suppose if I go for create and inside the create, I created uh, these text boxes, but a specific name was there like ID description and is it done. And I did say that these names must be same names as that of the properties uh, 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 for which class is acting as a model for this UI. So now instead of we creating this text box by ourselves or so, we also have some helper available. Why, why, why should I go and type completely? Can't server generate this text box for me, which is more or less same thing which ASP colon text box was doing for us. But then ASP colon text box was making the uh, life difficult by making view state available for the control by default. So we have one server side code and we can specify I want in this place, I'm going to give a call to HTML. Now HTML over here, it's going to refer HTML helper class in MVC. And I'm going to ask HTML helper, that is I want a text box for, and it says text box for what? So you may specify, I want text box for. Now we want a text box for specific thing. Like we want text box for a name prop description property of a model class object. And for that you will specify, maybe let's say, maybe my model, this will always expect a parameter, which is a kind of link you. So we'll specify the parameter M suppose goes to and I want to use m dot. Now m dot what? Let's say description over here. So one option is you may specify that I want. I hope at the up we specified okay. The create view was of type dynamic. So I should have specified the create view is of type h task. Let me go to edit. It is of type h task and that's the reason we did not get intelligence and the zigzag line exists however it won't create a problem yeah so this will convey us that <coughs> m dot description to be referred from m but whatever is the parameter that you specified it's always considered in this lambda expression as object of type model and then for the description i want to create a text box so now if you run the program again and if we put a breakpoint at create post create method which is of type post here and if I put a breakpoint now again now I'll say create a new task here I have got now there's a problem because I guess we missed one extra bracket here let's go to create and I'll specify no semicolon Let's run this. It's a great task. We have a UI. Let's enter 67. Let's enter test. And is it done? Let's say false. I'll create a new task now. Thing we want to see is in the new task, we have this description test available. And before I even proceed further, if I show you view source, click. Maybe I may need to continue. And again, I'll say create new task. If I have to show you, let me click on view source and just observe what's the text box generated. So this text box, which is automatically written, has got ID description and also has got name as a description and type is equal to text. Why and who did this? This is all done by MVC view engine default because I specified to the view engine, I want an input type equal to text here specifically representing description. So this is the code which did try to show if any data exists in M model for description or if at all data does not exist, then this data will be submitted for description using name property and ID property for the description. And default name is property name itself. But who did this? I did not do it. I did not write it. It was all done by the MVC engine itself. For now why exactly we are discussing this part? 
This part we are discussing because we are going to see a concept now called as scaffolding wherein this UI that you see that we have authored, you need not create a UI. The view engine can generate the entire UI for, a, for you based on the model itself. And then maximum times you don't deal with the UI, you deal with the business logic on the controller side and on the model side. So how that is done, we'll try to understand it now. Uh, before even I proceed, there's one more uh, a short thing we can quickly cover that just like we have got HTML.txt box for, imagine a situation where I can pass on entire model as an object. And whatever I pass on as an object, imagine based on that, I can create any tag that I want. I mean to say, imagine a, uh, maybe a function here, HTML dot, and let's say registration form for, and which can take a parameter of type model. What will happen then? And we, that end, with respect to that model, we will have an entire UI created. Isn't that, you can say great, but we don't have any kind of a method like that. But can we create one? We can. How? I'll show you now. So if you notice, text box for is a simple method of a class, if you see a class called as HTML helper. You can see that getter said the HTML helper is what it conveys. Can't we just go and add extra method into this class itself called as HTML helper? Now HTML helper class is not written by us. It's written by Microsoft and that too in a compiled format into system.mvc.dll. So obviously one uh, thing is clear, we won't be able to change that class. Second, if the class is extensible, we can very well extend the class and add on our own method and we can start referring our class as well over here. Second option, instead of we doing that job, imagine we have a feature in C sharp 3.0 onwards, something called as extension method. How about adding extension method to HTML helper class? And that extension method will be just like text box for, we can decide what that method name is. We can take anything as a parameter and we can construct entire UI by ourselves. So let's try doing that. So inside this, inside, uh, I'm not going to do any change in this program. I'm simply going to create a new program now. So I'm going to unload this program and create one very simple MVC project again, which is blank MVC project. Let's name this as test HTML helper. Again, empty project with ASPX engine. And let's add a default controller as usual called as home controller along with the default index method as usual. And then I'm going to go and return a view. Our concern is we just want to see the HTML helper API. So we are not concerned about, you can say, how model is created, how controller talks with the model and so on. So it's a very simple demonstration wherein I'll create a UI now called as index UI. So before I proceed, let me add a folder called as home now. And inside the home folder, let me add one file. Let's add a file called as index now, which is with ASPX view with no master page at all. Let's add this now. This is all empty. And the next thing to do inside this uh, page is I want to use the HTML helper. So percent and I'll say HTML helper dot. And I want my method over here. How do I get my method over here? And to do that job, I'm going to add one extra folder for adding extra class. Let me put a folder called helper and inside the helper, I'm going to add one new class. Let's call this as HTML helper, maybe extender, name can be anything. And inside this class, I'll add a very normal method which returns a string, which will take a parameter and return a string, string in a sense, tag as a string. And we'll specify now, uh, just like there was HTML text box for, I'll specify HTML my tag for. And we'll take a parameter out here. But since we want this method to be extension to HTML helper, we'll specify here this. Now, 
is a simple syntax for adding an extension method. So I want this method to be extension for HTML helper. HTML helper comes from MVC, system.web.mvc I have referred now. And then let's specify now, let's say maybe helper. Second parameter, I would expect a parameter of type some data. So maybe I'll specify object and some data over here. Method parameters can be anything that you want. And whatever comes up in some data, I'm just going to go and return one new tag by myself. So let me return over here a tag called as span. Let me say slash span. And let me write down some simple data in here. Let's say plus again and enter my data right now. Sorry, data it should be only. Some data it was, so sorry. So I got some data, let's convert this into string and then let's add that data into a span tag itself. And this is the entire string I'm going to want to return whenever somebody gives a call to my tag for. So let's go back to index method and I'll specify now here. Why will this my method will be available for HTML helper or with HTML helper. So I need to make one small change, make to make this class static and also need to make this method static. Why? This is a simple syntax for extension method. So now if you see in the code, if you go for HTML helper dot. So along with text box for, along with maybe any other method, validation message for, we have got one more extra method now and that method is called as my tag for. But why am I not getting that in IntelliSense? Reason is very simple. Your namespace for the class is different. It's test HTML helper dot helper. So let's do one thing. At the top, we'll specify at the rate, import a namespace, which is so and so. So let down that import attribute and we'll specify Maybe compilation attribute as well. So we have got helper referred. And now suddenly, whenever you see HTML dot, we should be able to get now my tag for. And this is the kind of you can say a function that we have authored. And expected parameter is obviously object sum data. But I did write two parameters, right? One is HTML helper and one is the object sum data. Now with extension method, normally first parameter is always the class object with which we want to extend or have this method available my tag for so we wanted my tag to be available my tag for to be available with html helper object so we took this as a first parameter and one mandatory thing was keyword was required to be uh, here called as this two parameter two uh, you can say more things make class static and make method static and now after this you pass on anything that you want and now i'll put up a statement over here let's say welcome to MVC over here. Let's see what happens now. Let's run this code for home slash index. In index method, there is actually nothing, only returning a view. Let me run the code and see on the UI what you get now. You get something called as span tag. Now this actually doesn't get rendered as a tag right now. So we need to check. View source is there. And we have ampersand LTGT taken as it is. So is unfortunately that encoding is automatically done for those extra tags. So maybe we will try to use one more. There's a helper class available called as tag builder. I'll say tag builder, builder equal to new tag builder. And this will ask me which tag would you like to build? I'll say I want to like to build a tag called as span. And I'll specify builder dot inner, it should be inner HTML or inner text. Let's try to set the attribute now, set inner text to the value which is called as some data dot to string and then let's return from here builder dot to string which means convert entire tag in the form of span with the content in line and then that encoding which is like ampersand gtld can be ignored completely let me run the code now and we should not get now that we still are getting that data. Maybe it shouldn't have been set in a text or so. Or is it? Let's try to run with Chrome and see what we get now.
still a span. So this must have been inner text. I'll try this. Still gives us the tag, so we want to stop encoding now. Now let's try to set the attribute directly by ourselves. Set attribute. So I've just made small changes in the application that instead of uh, returning normal string, I started returning IHTML string that's uh, without the encoding, which means normally when you return a tag with less than sign or greater than sign, it gets converted into less than ampersand LT and ampersand GT. Just to, uh, we can say, uh, uh, avoid the forgery. So now we have IHTML string wherein we can convey that return this HTML as it is to the client end. So I'm returning IHTML string. I converted, I created a new HTML string object which implements IHTML string and then created a span tag along with some data inside it, which will help me return the data as it is. So if I run the code again, you get welcome to MDC. And if you say right click and inspect the element, what do you see in source is under the div, you may find out a span tag available along with content called as welcome to MVC. So now that we understand uh, maybe HTML helper as a concept, let's see how scaffolding works in case of MVC.